honor of Women's History Month, Fox 40's Amy Hogan brings us a story about one of the most influential and arguably least recognized people in Southern Tier history. That's tonight's Legacy Landmarks report. After a year of restoration, the Victorian home on Front Street in Owego now looks like it did back in 1872. When they had taken all of the trim and things, uh, they actually had left a lot of it up in the attic. So we were able to take that. Um, our carpenter was able to recreate pieces that were missing. Ike and Julie Loveless bought the house in 2017. The plaster like this, yeah. there was just whole sections throughout the building. And to I turn into an inn, so this is the, Tioga room. the Belva Lockwood. When we first toured the house, the gentleman who was showing us the house used Belva Lockwood as a selling point, that Belva Lockwood owned this property, she owned this property, and we, were, we had no idea what he was even talking about. Coming to Owego in 1862 from western New York, Belva Lockwood was 23 years old, a widow, and a single mother. She ran the female seminary school that once sat on this property, and it turns out, she was kind of a big deal. She was the first woman to ever officially run for president, and she ran in 1884 and in 1888. That was 36 years before women won the right to vote. One of our campaign slogans was, I can't vote for me, but you can. Lockwood ran on the National Equal Rights Party line, a cause she threw herself behind from a young age. Her first real fight in the world was equal pay for all. That was when she took her first teaching job and found out her male colleagues were being paid double what she was. She was 14 years old. She clearly was a woman before her time. In 1865, she would sell the Owego School and move to Washington, D.C., setting her sights on a law degree. She applied to Columbian, where... The dean told her, you can't come to law school, you'll be a distraction to the young men. So she went to the National University School of Law instead, passing with honors. When it came time to graduate... They wouldn't give her her diploma. They said, no, we're not going to give a woman a diploma. Oh, you can come to our college, pay our fee, but we're not going to give you that, that sheet of paper. So she went over all of their heads. She wrote to President Grant, and she told him what they did. A week later, boom, <laughs> she got her degree. Next, it was the Supreme Court who tried to tell Belva no, that women can't argue a case at the federal level. So she wrote a bill an anti-discriminatory bill. It would take years. But finally, by March 3rd, 1879, Congress did pass the law, and that allowed women to uh, practice before the United States Supreme Court. Belva was the first. So she truly was a pioneer. Just it boggles your mind. And what's crazy to me is that how nobody knows about her. About her accomplishments, Ike and Julie have taken it upon themselves to spread the word. Books on every bedside table at the inn encourage guests to read more, to draw inspiration from the woman who wouldn't take no for an answer. Simply to be like Belva. In Owego for Fox 40 News, I'm Amy Hogan.